Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So today we're going to go over the GoPro subscription and the GoPro cloud storage. We're going to talk about how it works, some demonstrations, how to get your footage from your GoPro up to the cloud, either directly from your GoPro or from a tablet or even a desktop. And we're going to talk about whether it's worth the price. The price of a GoPro subscription is $60 for the year, basically $5 per month. And whether it's worth it is a difficult question to answer because everybody's needs and how they'll use it is different. Now, in my opinion, the way I use my workflow, it's actually very beneficial to me. And it's beneficial, I think, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, you get unlimited cloud storage. And that's actually a pretty good deal for $5 a month. And it will upload all your GoPro content in the high resolution original format. You don't lose any quality. And it's not just for GoPro content. You can upload any content that you have on a device or a computer, whether it's filmed on a drone, a DJI action camera, stuff you've filmed with your smartphone. All of that can be uploaded to the GoPro cloud storage. On top of that, you get deals on their cameras. You usually get $100 off on new releases. You get 50% off accessories when you order them directly from the GoPro website. But the most important thing and why I think it's important is you get insurance for your cameras. And normally when you buy those aftermarket insurance like from DJI if you get something like DJI Care Refresh you have to pay for a package for every single drone that you purchase and when you buy it you get it either for a year or two years and that's it with the GoPro plan however once you spend the money on the GoPro membership every single GoPro that you own is covered now everything from the Hero 5 up but that includes your GoPro Max even if you have a Karma drone that's included under there as well so if you're a person who has say five different GoPros you might have a Hero 5 a Hero 8 and maybe perhaps a new Hero 10. Every single one of your cameras is covered. No questions asked. If you damage it, all you have to do is contact GoPro. You do have to pay a deductible and I believe for the Hero 10 it's about $100 and the older GoPros I think are about 69, but they'll just send you a new one, you send them the old damaged one back and you're up and running again. Myself, I've only had to use that service once and it went to actually pretty smoothly. Uh, from the time I put in my initial claim, I had a GoPro within uh, about a week. They ended up waiving the fee. I forget the reason why, but I didn't even have to pay the fee that they would normally charge. So when you add everything together between the unlimited cloud storage, insurance for your cameras, deals on accessories and GoPros, to me, it's well worth it for the $5 a month. And especially if you're somebody like myself who edits mobily on an iPad or an iPhone, all your content is at every device when you need it. If it's something that you might need down the road, you can just upload it to the cloud storage and whether you ever use it again or not, no big deal. It's not using up space on your iPad or your iPhone and you can access it whenever you need. There are some limitations to it and we'll talk about that here at the end of the video. So let's go ahead here and we're going to take a look at how we can utilize the cloud storage, how to get our content from our tablet, our GoPro, a desktop, right up to the GoPro cloud. So let's start with the GoPro itself. They have a feature and it's called auto uploading. Basically, when you plug your GoPro into charge, it's going to automatically connect to your internet service and start uploading while it's charging. And it actually works quite well. You do have to set it up initially by launching the GoPro Quick App here. Go over to your GoPro section where all your GoPros are listed that you have connected to the Quick App. And you can see here we have an option for cloud auto upload. When you click on that, that'll run you through the setup of getting your GoPro connected to the cloud automatically. It's pretty simple to set up and once you've done it once, you don't have to do that again. But I'm just going to show you quickly here what happens. So we've got our GoPro Hero 10 Black and it's powered off. We're just going to plug it in. And you'll notice here when it starts to charge, it's actually going to power on. You can see there it's now went ahead and powered on all on its own and in a minute here it's going to connect to the cloud. There you go there you can see it's now connected. So we didn't have to do anything we didn't have to initiate the upload ourselves as soon as we plug it into power to charge it's going to scan the GoPro to see what needs to be uploaded and you can see there on the screen it's saying it's uploading file one of eight. Now if you don't want to upload anything all you have to do is hit stop Upload is going to cancel and the GoPro is automatically going to power off. And if you do let it continue, once all the files are uploaded, again, it'll just go ahead and power off. So it's pretty convenient. You can just get home from whatever you've been filming, plug it in, sit down, make a coffee. And uh, by the time you're done, all your footage will be ready on the cloud. So now we'll take a look at how you can upload content manually from stuff stored on your device or from a home desktop. Because you might have content that you filmed on your iPhone, a DJI drone, like I said, even a DJI action camera you may want that stored in the cloud as well. The two ways we can do it is by either using the GoPro Quick app or we can use a browser. Now, when you first launch the GoPro app, it's gonna launch what's called the GoPro Mural. And this is just a collection of videos and photos that you manually add to it. But this is a way how you can also get your non-GoPro footage up to the cloud. 
by adding it to the mural, it's going to automatically upload to the GoPro Cloud. You can actually see here in this top left hand corner, there's a little animated icon. That means it's actually currently uploading some stuff that I did add to my mural earlier. So to get our content onto the mural so it will start to upload, you can see here we can click on media and we have three options at the top. The first is app, then we have cloud, and then we have tablet. Now if you're doing this on a phone, it'll say phone or camera roll or something like that. Now all the content listed under app is not what's in our camera roll. This is content that we transferred over directly from the GoPro, either by plugging it in directly or over Wi-Fi. So it's not stored in our camera roll. All this content is stored directly within the app. Cloud is just what it sounds like. That's all the content that we have up in the cloud right now. So you can browse everything that you have from all your devices. And tablet basically gives you a view of your camera roll. So this is all the content that I currently have stored in the Photos app. And what we can do here is we can select a couple items. Let's just uh, select those two ones there. And you can see at the bottom here, we can go ahead and edit it, but we can select Add to Mural. At this point, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna add it to an existing event or an existing selection of photos, or we can create a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one and it's now added it to the mural. It'll ask us if we want to give it a title. I usually just hit skip. And you can see now we have this extra stuff on our mural. Those are the things that we just transferred over. And the nice thing now is that it's automatically going to upload to the cloud. And you can actually transfer stuff from your files app as well. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our files app because I keep a lot of raw data, raw video and that in my files app. So let's go here to the DJI FPV drone. You can see you got different clips and folders, but I can hit select. We'll choose those three items. Then I'm going to hit share. And what I'm going to do is select the GoPro quick option there. And again, you can see it comes up to add it to our mural. So I'll create a new event. So now if we go back to our mural, you can see those FPV shots that I just added are now there. And again, they're being uploaded to the cloud. So that's a simple way to use the app to get all your footage, whether it's GoPro or not, up to the cloud. Uh, the other way to do it, as mentioned, is by using a browser. And sometimes this is my preferred method just because you can be a little bit more selective and you don't have to add it to your mural if you don't want. And the nice thing about that is this is how you can do it from a desktop PC or laptop, whether it's a Windows based unit or Mac. Now I'm just going to demonstrate that using my iPad. It'll just be a little bit easier than setting up my laptop and trying to get a screen recording of that. So basically all you have to do from a desktop or a laptop is just launch any browser. Google Chrome or whatever you use. Go to the GoPro website, gopro.com. And then at the top here, you just want to click on GoPro subscription. Make sure you're logged in. Um, and again, I should mention if you don't have an account with GoPro, make sure you create an account. So I'm going to sign in. Once you've signed in, you can see it changed at the top here to join to now it says go to my media. And you can launch that. And you can see here's all the, uh, the content we have currently stored in the cloud. I actually have quite a bit in there. And up at the top here, you can see it actually showing us some of the stuff that we just added to our mural that we were uploading. So it's pretty good that way everything syncs together and works together nicely. So from here, all we have to do is click add media. From a desktop, you can drag whole folders right to this box, or you can select upload your media. You choose where you want to upload from. On a tablet here, it's giving us the option for photo library. We can take a photo or video, or we can browse our files app. So let's go ahead there, and that's what we'll do. Let's go and upload that file there. And you can see it's going to give us a progress bar as it uploads. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that just uh, so we can continue with this demonstration. Now of course when you have your collection fully uploaded, you can download your content to any device. Whether you're going to be editing some content on a computer or an iPhone or an iPad or any type of Android device, you can access your content from anywhere as long as you have a nice, you know, good solid connection. So let's just go ahead to this clip here. We'll bring it up. You can see we can preview it. Now, when you're previewing it, it's just a low res version because you're streaming it basically from the GoPro cloud. When you're done previewing it, there's a few things you can do here. We can edit it if you want to shorten it down, say you don't want the whole clip. You know, if it's a five minute clip, but you just want a 30 second section, you can trim it down there. You can add a highlight tag. You can take a screenshot. So if you just need to make a thumbnail of something, but most importantly, you can download it. You can see here it gives us some options and one of them there is download. And when we go to download it, you can actually download it as a compressed 1080. So if you have limited bandwidth or you don't have a lot of time, you can download a compressed version or you can download the original quality. And uh, if you record in 5K, you'll download the 5K footage. 
This clip here was in 4K, so it would download the 4K footage. Now that was from the browser, but you can also use your Quick app. Go over to Media, go over to Cloud, and again, you can bring up any clip, and we can download it. It'll ask us where we want to save it to. We can download it directly to the GoPro app, or we can save it to the Photos app. If we click on that there, again, it's going to ask us the quality. Do we want to leave it in 4K, or do we want the compressed version? So it's pretty simple on how it all works. Now, there are some limitations with the GoPro Cloud service, but Nick Woodman did mention that they have some big changes coming to it, and hopefully we'll see that this year. I think we'll see a big revamp of it alongside the launch of the Hero 11 later this fall. Because one problem is, is that... Uh, Nothing is really organized. Everything is sorted by date, so it's organized in that way. But, uh, you know, everything is just lumped into this one gallery. If you're trying to find stuff, sometimes it can be difficult, especially if you're trying to isolate things that were shot on, say, something like a Hero 7 or the Hero 8. What would be nice is if they created some sort of folder system where you can go in and manually move things around and put it in folders. Stuff that makes a little bit more sense for editing. The other thing I hope they do is offer better integration right into the iPad. For example, it would be nice if we could integrate it right into locations. Similar to like when you add something like the Google Cloud, you can actually add them to the side there so you can just move files back and forth quickly that way. That integration would also make it easier to send files from your camera roll directly to the cloud. So hopefully going forward, that is something they're working on and we will see that in a future update. So yeah, folks, that's basically a quick overview of the GoPro Cloud. Again, for myself, it's well worth the money just to be able to have unlimited cloud storage for my photos and videos. It's a great way to keep things backed up, especially if you're on holidays. You can be uploading stuff to the cloud and that way you don't have to worry about uh, having a damaged memory card or something like that. And on top of that, as mentioned, just having the bonus of having insurance on all your cameras and getting discounts on accessories also sweetens the deal. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.